Hey there, I'm the Mad Catster and am I glad to see you here. What kind of a person exploits their kids to make a fast buck? Well, we need look no further than the family vlogging channels that are pervasive all over YouTube now. Parents using kids to make a fast buck on YouTube have been getting exposed more and more. So come along and join me as we talk about some of the worst. Smile for the camera, kids. Daddy needs a new Lamborghini. We've seen the meteoric rise of family vlogging channels over the past four years on YouTube. And these channels attract millions of followers who tune in to watch even the most mundane detail of these people's lives. However, for the most part, these family vlogging channels create staged or faked content just to attract the views. And of course, it's not helped by the fact that YouTube's algorithm pushes family content to the front and suggests it more often, which leads to more views, which creates a perpetual cycle. So these family vlogging channels have no incentive not to stop. And in fact, they get rewarded by YouTube's algorithm for doing just what they're doing. Recently, we've seen some particularly horrific examples of bad parenting. The first example of bad parenting is from family vlogging mom, Jordan Cheyenne, she published a now deleted video, which a lot of you probably have seen where she, she and her family had adopted a puppy, the puppy, I think it had Parvo. And of course they were devastated. Who wouldn't be, especially her kid who was in this video, her son, who I just absolutely felt so horrible for, because I know what it's like to have a sick pet and to lose a pet. Apparently she had uploaded the unedited version of the video where at the end she's actually coaching her son look like you're crying she tells him and even more heart-wrenching the kid says but mom i am crying or something to that effect and it's like you know you didn't need to coach your kid he's obviously very upset over this it's obviously very traumatic for him what are you doing diane then tells her son no i know but go like this for the video she says and she's feigning tears and she raises her hands to her forehead in distress which is just absolutely horrific cheyenne removed the video after she was called out she received an awful lot of well-deserved hate and heat for what she did um, and of course she made the ubiquitous apology video that all of these youtubers make that cleanses them of their sins in the eyes of their most ardent followers however the backlash was so bad it looks like jordan cheyenne has taken time off and she has basically put her channel into mothballs for the near future i'm sure she'll be back they all come back then we have the saintly lebrant family this is my least favorite type of family the one to pretend to be good Christians. And as with all good Christians, they tend to exhibit some of the least Christian behavior in the name of Jesus Christ, who I'm sure if he were alive today would be absolutely mortified at these right-wing people who invoke his name to justify their hatred, their discrimination, and their bigotry. The LeBrant family, who produces content so bland, that Daddy LeBrant decided, oh, let's spice things up a little bit. So they posted a video and the title of it was, she got diagnosed with cancer and in parentheses documentary. So of course, the fans of the LeBrant family were very distressed to read this. They all I'm sure thought that one of the LeBrant kids had been diagnosed with cancer and it's a horrific situation for any family. Certainly, you don't wish it on your worst enemy. But Cola Brandt, who is, in my opinion, a sick motherfucker, pardon my French, posted this video. It was 42 minutes long. And it wasn't until six minutes into it that he finally reveals that their daughter, in fact, was not diagnosed with cancer. And I was like, what the fuck? So this clearly was just clickbait and it's really disgusting to make it even more worse to, to show that they were just pandering for views. They then went on to try to do something good by 
highlighting children and parents where the kids had been diagnosed with cancer. And basically, I'm sorry to say this, but based on what I've seen, I can't help but think this, that it was all just a contrivance uh, to make them appear like they were doing some kind of a public service with this video. When in fact, it's clear from the title, from the whole premise, that this was all one big exercise in getting views and monetizing and capitalizing on poor kids that have cancer by alleging that their daughter had cancer when she didn't. And then, of course, you have my favorite family. I say that with not even the slightest touch of sarcasm. The Ace family. And on top of the shit tornado swirling around them that's still going on in a variety of ways, recently posted a video and the video was called our new dog bit our baby scary moment <laughs> so what does that make you think of course oh the dog must have bit the baby right well they too made an idiotic mistake and posted raw footage that was unedited part of it shows austin trying to set up a scene with his son and encouraging to, to hit this uh baseball be like practice thing that spins around when you hit the ball Obviously, Austin was getting frustrated because the kid wasn't doing what he wanted him to do. Later in the video, you see Catherine McBroom. She's talking about how allegedly the dog ripped the baby's cheek, apparently. And she's holding the baby in her lap. And she then proceeds to have the camera zoom in on the alleged spot of the bite. And what we see is there's nothing there. There's no injury. And you can see Austin gets very agitated and says no no you know basically he says don't show that makes you wonder you know what was he gonna photoshop or or put there in its place to make it look like there was an injury because it was clear to me and to anybody with the naked eye at least that there was no injury and again another clickbait title to make money and god knows the situation they're in they need the money but it just another disgusting example of kids being exploited by their internet parents Many of you are probably familiar with the name Mika Stauffer. Now, Mika Stauffer and her husband have a family vlogging channel. And several years ago, they started a series where they were going to adopt a baby from China. It's a great thing if you have room and love enough in your family to adopt a child, especially we know from watching news stories and other documentaries that Eastern Europe and China, um, Russia and China in particular, have lots of unwanted children. And these are children who have learning disabilities or some kind of physical problem. And they are so callous that they shove these kids into horrific orphanages, often with the worst conditions. Kids that are, that I uh, just, <clears throat> Sorry, I can't even talk about it. Kids who like are basically left in cribs, even when they're not babies, and receive no physical attention or interaction or love their entire lives. And to me, it is beyond words. But anyway, so, of course, Everyone thought how wonderful Mika Stauffer and her husband are going to open their family up and they're going to adopt a child. With So they proceeded to make a series of videos showing the whole adoption process and them getting ready for this child to come. However, after they adopted the child, and it became apparent pretty quickly that the child's needs were very, very um, complex and probably more than most people could handle. And what really made me angry was Mika Stoffer had talked about early in this process how the mental health professionals and the doctors who were involved in um, consultation for this whole adoption process had warned her specifically that it was going to require an awful lot to provide for this child. And at one point, 
she made some flippant remark about how this talk went in one ear and out the other and how she basically just ignored them and was hell-bent on going forward with the adoption. So, okay. Now, I it's not the same thing, obviously, but I have 17 rescue cats. Many of them have special needs or health problems and we're going to be put to sleep because of you know different health issues that their owners did not want to deal with now i have adopted all of these cats and when i adopt one i make a commitment for the rest of its life i don't care what the issue is and in fact i have one cat and you'll meet her and she's probably one of my best success stories but her name is chloe chloe had had her i'm sorry to digress but just I just want you to understand what my mindset is when I saw this story. Chloe had gotten her toe caught, her foot caught in a trap. And apparently she'd been, I don't know, days and days before she was finally discovered. And she was a feral cat. She had to have two surgeries to amputate one of her toes and to fix her foot. They were going to put her to sleep and she was a young cat. She maybe was a year old. And I thought, oh my God, how can they put this poor cat to sleep? So I agreed to take it. And so I adopted this cat from New York. And when I got her home, I had set up a bathroom for her, a separate bathroom. And she literally attacked me and drew blood and bit me and made a complete mess out of my arms and hands and legs. And after about a day of trying to interact with this cat, I got so frustrated. I called the rescue that had facilitated the adoption because it would, even though it came from animal control, you have to have a rescue involved. I said to them, I'm really sorry. I've never done this before, but I cannot handle this cat. You're going to have to take her back. And that night, I literally didn't sleep at all. I tossed and turned. I cried. And the next morning I said, I can't do that. I can't send her back because, first of all, I made a commitment that I was going to take this cat and I was going to give this cat a home. And second, because I knew if I sent her back, that cat, no one else was going to adopt her. That cat, that was the end of its life. So I kept Chloe and for six months... Every day, I, I finally put on, I wore like these uh, thick gardening leather gloves. And I would go in there and I would keep my distance and I would talk to her and I would give her treats. And after about six months, she finally changed. This cat now, and I do not exaggerate, when I go into the kitchen, which is where she usually likes to hang out, she comes and she puts her paws up. She, she wants me to pick her up and hold her and she has not attacked me since and she has become the most lovable cat and I'm so glad that I stuck to my commitment but that's my whole point Mika Stoffer and her husband made a commitment to this child they were warned that this child was going to be a handful they made a commitment they should have honored their commitment and in fact they had even had fundraisers where their fans donated thousands and thousands of dollars to help defray the cost of this adoption. And yet, last year, a disturbing video went up where Mika Stoffer and her husband made it clear that they had rehomed their child. Rehomed, like it was a stray cat, to use that analogy again. I can't think of the, anything more reprehensible. Not the fact that they sought out better circumstances because I from what I saw in some of the videos this child was not getting what I would think what he needed and it's not that I would fault them for trying to find a better home but what really angered me was they were told this is gonna be a big commitment this is gonna be hard work this child is going to be difficult this child's gonna need lots of care and they failed to listen they made the commitment they publicized it, monetized it, profited off of it, got the child, decided, oh my God, I can't deal with this. And they foisted it off like it was an animal onto somebody else. I think that's disgraceful. 
absolutely disgraceful. And I think it's probably the worst incident of profiting off of children on YouTube. So there are many, many examples of incidents of families profiting off their kids you know, where their greed gets in the way. Unfortunately, as we've seen like with the Ace family in particular, clearly they live beyond their means and they've exhausted their funds. So now there's these kids that they've used to get views and get sponsorships and brand deals and other things to make money off of these videos. There's going to be nothing for these children. They're not going to have benefited in any way from this. It's all for the parents, you know, and back in the day, a long time ago in the entertainment industry, in the early days, children were exploited the same way. They worked long hours. They and oftentimes were given drugs and amphetamines and things to keep them going so that they could cope with long filming schedules. And then laws were passed back, I think it was in the 30s, that regulated what could be done with children and how often they could work and what the conditions were to try to stop the exploitation of children. The problem with the online entertainment industry is it doesn't fall within the parameters that this law addresses. There's nothing to stop parents from exploiting these kids as often as they want in order to create content and to get money off of it. What we need now is for the legislators to wake up finally and say, okay, this is wrong. We're seeing too much of parents taking advantage of their kids. The kids are not really benefiting from it. You could say, oh, well, they get all these nice things, but we all know that those things aren't for the kids. They're for the parents. Not only that, but can you imagine growing up where your entire existence, all you've known is this fishbowl existence with people on YouTube watching you? There has to be some kind of buffer that protects children from this kind of exploitation. And I hope that at some point in the near future, we're finally going to see the legislators wake up or, or within the industry itself, people like YouTube, where they finally get to the point where they say, we've got to make sure that we're protecting these kids. Anyways, that's my take on it. I hope you liked the video. Please hit the thumbs up. Sorry, it was kind of a serious one this time, but you know, it's something I really have felt strongly about in watching. Um, I hope nobody was offended by my analogy with the cats, but really it was just to illustrate the fact that when you make a commitment, you make a commitment. And it doesn't matter whether it's a child or a, or a pet or whatever it is, you shouldn't be able to just, in a snap, turn your back on it. But anyways, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I really, really appreciate you watching. Today, I'm going to give you one Meet the Cat intro. And you can't see her, but she's sitting right here. And this is Clarice. And Clarice is very loud. She has a meow. I've had a lot of Siamese cats. Her meow is more annoying than a Siamese cat. She makes this incredibly loud, almost piercing scream type of meow that when she wants attention, I can find her wherever she is in the house, believe me. But Clarice came to me from Georgia. She was a feral cat. She had been living outside in poor health. Her ears, you can't see it, but her ears were, must have been so badly infected for such a long time that she had scratched her ears and they are just bundles of scar tissue. Of course, that's not the case now. She's a very healthy, happy cat, but that's another one of my examples of cats that I've taken in. I thank you for watching. I hope you all take care until the next video and I'll see you soon. Party, please. Subscribe, like, and hit the bell. I get a treat for every new sub. Thank you.